To identify birds, a few key things to look at are just the overall size and shape of the bird. So look at it and see if it's plump or is it kind of slender in appearance? Are its wings rounded? Um, what was the shape of its bill? For this picture here, the bill is a little bit conical. So that tells me that it's a seed eater. Compared to our little screech owl, that hook on the end of the bill tells me that it's a meat eater. And then this right here, our Baltimore Oriole, which is the Maryland State Bird, has a long, thin, pointed bill. This bill is important for eating insects, so it's there to grab those insects in the air. Overall, looking at the color patterns of the birds, including the colors that are on the wings, colors right around the eyes, and anything that really stands out on the bird can be helpful for identification. In addition, behavior can also be important. Is the bird up in a tree, sitting up there singing? Or is it sitting on the ground, kicking up leaves and foraging? Or is it waiting in the water, trying to catch and stalk fish or frogs? Or is it swimming in the water? That behavior can also be important for identification. The final factor that we look at is habitat. Are you in a woods? Are you by the water? Are you by a stream? What part of Maryland are you in? Those types of things can give you clues of what wildlife are going to be there, including what birds you would expect to see. So for the purposes of Envirothon, it's really helpful to understand the different groups of birds. That's going to really, really be um, important instead of memorizing a bunch of birds. So understanding the characteristics of things like geese, duck, and swans, which are kind of bigger, rounded birds that swim in the water. We have chicken-like birds, which include things like our ruffed grouse right here that look a lot like a chicken, and they have these big, fluffy tails, and they, in the springtime, Time, go out and drum up in the fields to essentially attract other birds. We have our waders, like great blue herons, that take their long legs and stalk in the water to try to find food. We have our shorebirds that are hanging out along shorelines. We have our birds of prey, like our owls and our hawks and things of that nature that are designed for capturing other birds or mice or other types of animals to eat them. We have our woodpeckers, we have our chickadees, our tick mice and nuthatches and lots of other smaller birds. So just understanding those major groups of birds are going to really help you with identifying different species. A list of common birds to know will be found on our website. So are you ready to look for some birds? If so, let's go out to the woods. Oh, I hear a bird and it's drilling over here in the tree. Let's take a closer look. We have two woodpeckers here up in this tree. Woodpeckers are in the family Picidae. They have these long chisel-like bills and they have these special feet called zygodactyl feet that allow them to climb up and down trees. They have a really long tongue too that actually wraps around their brains. Now, according to my field guide, these two look very, very similar. So they could either be a downy woodpecker or a hairy woodpecker. The key differences between the two is the size of the bill. Downy woodpeckers actually have a much smaller bill than our hairy woodpeckers. These are two common species that you will find throughout Maryland and in backyards. Oh look, another bird. Some birds in Maryland are year-round residents, while others only visit in the winter or in the spring or in the summer. This dark bird right here is an example of a winter resident. Look at its overall shape of its body and look at that big conical bill. What do you think it eats? And look at that body type. What kind of bird do you think this is? Those are helpful clues for identification. This bird has the classic body of a sparrow and they are seed eaters, which is what they use those conical bills for. Sparrows are in the family Emberizidae. So this species has a very dark head and a dark eye and a light belly. This is called a dark-eyed junco. It's one of our winter residents here in Maryland, and it's very commonly found across the state and even in your own backyards. Ducks that nest in the northern United States must fly south to warmer climates to find food sources and wetlands that are not frozen during the winter. The migration routes for birds are known as flyways. And in Maryland, many of our migratory waterfowl use the Atlantic flyway. Ducks are often placed into two main groups based on feeding habits. We have our dabbling ducks, like our mallards, that dabble along the surface and eat things like aquatic plants and sometimes aquatic insects. 
And then we have our diving ducks, which actually dive under the surface of the water to eat things like fish and other types of organisms in the water. In many species of ducks, the male and the female um, do not look alike. So there is what we call sexual dimorphism between the species. One thing that can be helpful for identification is actually looking at the wing patterns on the ducks and looking at this part in particular called the speculum. Sometimes you can actually sex the ducks based on these patterns on their wings in flight or in hand. Well, look at these two pictures. Pictured here are two diving ducks that we have here in Maryland and they're often winter residents. What are some things that you notice that are similar among the birds and might be different? Look at those color patterns, particularly on the head and on the back of the bird. Can you tell the differences between the two? Male canvasbacks have a white back compared to the mottled gray back on a redhead. Which one do you think is uh, the canvasback versus the redhead? If you chose this one, this is the canvasback and this is the redhead. Another thing to look at is the head. So the male canvasback has a sloping forehead while the redhead is much more abrupt with the shape of the head. Both can be found in lakes, salt bays, and in estuaries.